Welcome once again. It's the Close the Deal Show with Terrence McRae. Thank you for continuously tuning in on Monday nights on Channel 29, Cable Comcast at 830. And thank you all, viewers, for when you see me in society out here in the Bay Area, for reaching out to me and giving me these positive comments on what you like about the show. Because, see, the Close the Deal Show is about educating the Bay Area on new business strategies, whether you're a small business owner, an entrepreneur, a nonprofit organization, or a venture capitalist looking to find a way to give back not only to society, but to individuals who want to learn more about business. And today, I have a good friend of mine who's coming back on the show to discuss the differences between his nonprofit organization and others in the way he's not only partnering with other nonprofit organizations, but the way that his organization is not only making a difference in the community, but abroad. Because Mr. Sean Hayes is someone who is advocating change, change in a positive way that is helping people's lives that are making a difference in our community and being more productive. So ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Close the Deal show, Mr. Sean Hayes. Welcome, Sean. Hi, Terrence. Thank you so much for having me on the show again today. It is truly a pleasure to have you not only back on the show, but to bring the viewers up to date with what you're doing with your Social Impact Partners nonprofit organization. Please let the viewers know what's going on. Thank you. Uh, well, this year, we're doing a lot. Uh, we're very excited about that. Uh, we've created a lot of partnerships with local nonprofits and other business leaders to work on a set of projects. And the projects that we're working on are to engage our business community to do a change collection project. And so what that means is that we're gonna to start to ask businesses to put a change receptacle bin that we can have at their business when people are making purchases, you know, keep the change or donate the change. And that'll be a great way for our organization to raise money to address some of the issues around poverty and homelessness here in San Francisco. So what we plan to do with the change is to support people by putting some essential services uh, to them. So uh, we think about providing storage. We think about providing uh, access to bathrooms and access to showers and access to uh, facilities where you can charge a device. These are some of the essential resources that anybody needs in order to survive, ones that most of us take for granted, but those who live on our streets don't have consistent 24-7 access to that. So our goal is to raise a, a significant amount of capital to begin to support our homeless community by providing that. So what organization have you started with working with? So we are partnered with AP Philip Randolph Institute here in San Francisco. They're our fiscal sponsor. And we will be organizing a number of activities. Our, our big push is going to be through Pride. Uh, I'm actually being honored this year in San Francisco Pride, which means I'll be marching down Market Street with our sign talking about San Francisco Impact Partners. We did this last year, and everybody who was able to see our sign got very excited about that message coming down Market Street. And so we will be in some beverage booths, so look out for us there, but we'll also be marching down uh, Market Street showing the community that our city is now taking pride in supporting our homeless community. Sounds wonderful, Sean. How did you come about partnership with this company? So AP Philip Randolph is an institution that um, has a long legacy. AP Philip Randolph, Byrett Rustin, Martin Luther King, all came together to do the 1963 March on Washington. And here, the AP Philip Randolph organization, we're going to be doing lots of great initiatives together in the future. Uh, now we're focusing on this, but we'll also in the future be focusing on workforce development. So really engaging the homeless community of San Francisco and those who are impacted by poverty uh, to provide them access to uh, job education, training, and these essential resources as the pipeline to come out of the situation. So how do you address the issue of knowing the difference between a person who is homeless over a person who is taking advantage of these resources through drug activity? 
so yeah, well, there has been a lot of discussion about the, our homeless population and that uh, many of them are have substance abuse issues and or mental issues. And I feel that we need to take care of our community no matter what issues that they're going through. Um, a, a fair amount of people are, you know, trying to uh, most likely are using drugs to help them feel better about their situation or to forget about it. So I don't want to minimize or take away from their access to opportunity by saying that they can't have access to something. We want to support them every step of the way by navigating them to the resource providers that will help them with their substance abuse issues or help them with their psychological issues so that we can take them from that point and help navigate them to educational resources, training resources, uh, the basic resources that we talked about a moment ago as they get closer and closer to um, housing and jobs. It's a one-two combination, having both access to housing and jobs, but how do you get there? It seems to be the struggle that most people have gone through. So what kind of system have you put into place by being able to identify Who's serious about getting out of their situation and who's not trying to take advantage of it? So I've had a, a great time talking to other nonprofits and other resource providers to learn from them who have more experience than even myself as I've been homeless and displaced from housing, but not to the degree that most of the people who are living on our streets are. They have a better sense of what the issues and concerns are of our homeless community. So I spent a lot of time at the Coalition on Homelessness, understanding from that environment and the homeless persons who come there to advocate for themselves, what they want to see happen in the future. So the packages and programs that we put together really do build off of their input. Well, to me, I believe that the public issue with the public restrooms is a serious issue dealing with the homelessness because there are a lot of people that are urinating public as well as exposing fetus. And this is something that is disrespectful. This is something that's drastic. This is something that is scaring people in the public. I mean, you have innocent kids walking down the street and you have a grown man urinating in public that is very inappropriate. That type of exposure a young child should not be able to see. There should be more solutions in helping the homeless, but in addressing these issues, it needs to be done where everyone is getting involved and not just nonprofit. Um, the community needs to address this issue as a whole because it's affecting the community. So when you came up with the idea of providing storages. Where did you find this information can have an impact in the community? Yes, and uh, thank you for that question. So uh, the way I came about learning that storage w is a high priority for people who are experiencing homelessness was at a coalition of homelessness meeting where we're speaking with advocates and people who are experiencing poverty and homelessness. And a young woman uh, spoke and said that there was one agency that provided this resource. And this one agency also spoke and said that they had 480 units of storage for a city with well over 7,000 people who are living on our streets. And so when you compare 480 to 7,000, you see that there is a huge disparity in the access to storage. And so our goal is to support people by providing access to storage and subsidizing the expense. We have laws here in San Francisco that now say that you are not allowed to live in a tent in our streets. We need to be able to support our homeless community by saying, you know, we're living within this legal structure, which for me is a little disappointing and sad, but we are gonna work with it by providing the resources that you need and storage is a high priority need. Um, so imagine a situation such as this. We're providing storage to all the people. Now we have helped the city to be cleaner because we can now go to the homeless population and say, we want to support you. We understand that you don't have the things that you need to get along. We understand that shelters may not be the most comfortable place for you, but we want to make this resource available to you so that you can potentially maybe pitch that tip in the evening, but then break it down in the morning 
and be supported with pipelines to jobs, pipelines to education, so that your day is productive, as opposed to their day now, which is the consistent concern that somebody is going to sweep them and their tent away. So think about it. You think about it as your tent is your home. Think about it that is your home. Think about it somebody coming and wiping away your home. So now you can't store anything because you don't have a home and you don't have access to the things that you had in that space. We want to provide dignity to our homeless community and this is the number one way to do it in addition to supporting them with navigating them to showers, bathrooms, and laundry facilities so that we can get people prepared to enter the workforce, get people prepared to enter educational opportunities, and get people prepared to be civically engaged in our what's going on in our community. Well, in the Haight-Ashburn area, there are a bunch of individuals who choose not to, um, I guess, not work because they hang out all day and they hang out in areas where people are shopping and they stand with asking out, excuse me, people for donations. And they don't bathe, they don't shower, but as soon as someone come by with some marijuana, I've seen it firsthand. <laughs> they want to get high. And these people roam through the Golden Gate Park night and day, and you always see them toting their luggage. I noticed that when you came today here on the show, you brought a flyer that indicate I will work to end homelessness. I pledge to volunteer with San Francisco Impact Partners, okay, socialimpact.org volunteer. Donate to San Francisco Impact Partners, um, SF Impact Partners pledge, and partners with San Francisco Impact Partners, right? You also indicated now more than ever, community organizations need to support of strong community partners like us to make an impact on social serious issues such as poverty, displacement, and homelessness. We will work together to create opportunities for San Francisco to succeed. So San Francisco and the broad viewers, if you want to pledge to the Social Impact Partners, reach out. As you can see, there's a QR code that you can log on to the website. But my question again, Sean, is, how do you tell the difference between someone who wants to make a difference in their life and get out of homelessness over someone who really is not ready? That is a, an important question. Um, not everybody is ready. Not everybody um, who lives on our streets may consider themselves um, homeless in the same way that I considered myself homeless when I no longer had access to a, a, a consistent house to live in. So I know that I was homeless, as homeless, and I did everything I could to remediate that. Getting the resources from the city, getting the resources from my friends, uh, identifying pathways to help me come out of that situation. And so when we look at the youth who are on our streets in the the Hayes area that you talked about. Um, some of them may just want to live that free lifestyle of not being attached to the grid and just taking up from the generosity of people who come before them. And so uh, the focus of our organization really is going to be to reach out uh, to everybody who's on the streets and make the offer make the offer of saying, how can we support you? How can we help you? What is it that you want and need? And we're gonna to start to respond to the responses that we get and create resources specifically for them. If those youth who may not want to uh, come off the streets are presented with something that inspires them, then that is gonna be their inspiration to get on the pathway off living off the streets. That's gonna be, you know, but it's different from everybody else. Um, a response to a family who are living on the streets, they have different goals. The goal is to support that child. The, the goal is to, you know, come out of that situation, get all the resources that they need so that they can move along. So we don't want to create too many cookie cutter um, responses like a blanket, like one size doesn't necessarily fit all. Um, but we want to be able to communicate to them and say, here is a care package, another project that we're working on to put together, you know, humanitarian resources, first aid kit, 
you know, um, for women who are living on our streets, all of the uh, feminine product needs. Uh, we want to be able to provide that as a gift to people along with information to say, here's what we found that may be of interest to you. And if you wanna keep a connection to us, we want to support you with navigational partners to help you get what you need. Um, and very individualistic as opposed to being pressured into any certain direction. Do you believe homelessness is a choice? I believe that there are a lot of factors that can result into making someone homeless. I don't think that it is a choice. Uh, I know for me, it was a lot of, uh, you know, a job didn't go as long as I thought it would go. I didn't have enough savings to uh, support myself uh, to the next opportunity between, you know, like, oh, okay, I, I can no longer afford my apartment. And so this situation of homelessness impacts a lot of people differently, but I don't believe it's uh, directly a choice. And I know that when people end up ultimately living on the streets, that a lot of the choices that most of us take for granted become chipped away. You know, when you are applying for a job opportunity, for instance, there's an expectation that you look a certain way and behave a certain way. And there are a lot of barriers to getting job opportunities, especially for people who are formerly incarcerated. And so a lot of our work is going to be in the future helping people to navigate what their choices are um, and to find the right path for them. Personally, I don't believe that homelessness um, issues can't be resolved. I believe a lot of homeless suffer from mental issues. For one, I believe it's a choice that you make when you choose not to clean your body. But if you don't have self-confidence in yourself or are motivated, it is very difficult for you to, um, want, to uh, want something better. So do you believe it's a choice, Sean, for a homeless person to sit down and go to sleep anywhere or take advantage of the resources that are available out there in San Francisco because there are many organizations as well as yours that are providing resources for homeless people but are they making the choice to seek that help? I, I, that's a great question and I can tell you what I have learned by hearing people who are homeless, people who have lived in our shelter system and uh, people who have fallen into poverty is that um, while our city provides a lot of resources, the resources don't necessarily fit everybody. Access to those resources are very challenging. And, you know, let's take our shelter system for one. There is a thousand plus wait list to get into shelters on every single night of the week here in San Francisco. And so that's a thousand people wait list in a city that has 7,000 plus people who are homeless. So, you know, if we lined up all 7,000, the, the first thousand may or may not even get in. So thinking about the resources that we're making available and knowing that certain resources that we all hope were in place aren't enough. So we have to be creative with what we're doing with the resources that we provide to people. So uh, our organization, we're, we're growing. We're not in the capacity to, you know, put people into housing, but we are wanting to do the low hanging fruit of making sure that there's a storage option somewhere available to people um, as a stepping stone, making sure that they know where the bathrooms are, that we're helping to create more bathrooms as a stepping stone uh, and access to showers and bathrooms. And I believe that most of the people who are living on the streets um, may or may not know where all these resources are. They may or may not be available 24-7. You know, we live in houses, so our resources are available to us 24-7. We can go into our garage and shower, I mean, and, and launder our clothes. We can go into our bathroom and shower. But that isn't necessarily consistently available to people who are living on our streets because of the sheer volume. And so there's a lot of work to do. Yes, there is a whole lot of work to do, not only in San Francisco, but in our country. But, Sean, I have one more question for you, because in actuality, you know, um, I had the opportunity to meet one of the running candidates for San Francisco's mayor, and that's Jane Kim. Beautiful, wonderful person to meet. And I met her through a nonprofit organization as well called United Players. 
But you have this other woman who's running for mayor, London Breed. And let me tell you something. Everywhere I go, I see this woman's poster. But for these two candidates that are running in the, for office to become our next San Francisco mayor, how would you in your organization team up with the mayor to help solve this homeless problem and make a big difference in the community abroad? Uh, I have the fortunate uh, happenstance to know both London Breed and Jane Kim. They're both supervisors of different districts here in San Francisco. I've lived in each of them, District 6 and District 5, where I grew up. And no matter whether it's Jane Kim or, or London Breed or Mark Leno or any one of the other mayoral candidates, me personally and our organization will definitely have a relationship with our city mayor. And we will definitely have a relationship to the point where there will be open line of communication in terms of what we as an organization might need and want from our elected officials, what type of grants the city might be able to provide to us to uh, take on the issues that our organization has decided to take on to create more storage options for our homeless community, subsidized to the point where they can actually afford it or to create more access to 24 seven available showers and laundry and being able to support our homeless community by making sure that there is access to uh, an ability to charge a device or a phone. So those are really important for people who live in houses, but they're vitally important for people who don't live in houses. You know, we talked about bathrooms being an issue and that people are urinating and defecating across our entire city is because the city is not providing 24 hour seven access to bathrooms you know for people's ability to keep their both their bodies clean and their clothing clean as the pipeline to get access to resources we need to provide 24 7 access to laundry facilities and these are the stepping stones that will help the mass amount of people that who are experiencing poverty here in San Francisco. And we hope at San Francisco Partners to begin to create this as a replicable program that can be taken to every other major city. Because LA, they've got several thousand people who are homeless. LA has got a lot of people who are homeless. And the way that different cities approach this and, and our response to this will be the litmus tests for every other major city, like what's working, what's not working. And I believe this is a good first step to creating the necessary pipeline, the pipeline that supported me every time I experienced the situation. Those resources were made available to me. And so I was able to do everything I needed to do very quickly to get a job and to get a house and to get on with my life. And we need to do that in, in a way that making sure our homeless community knows that we care about them. That's the big question and issue right now in San Francisco. A lot of people who are living on our streets and a lot of the nonprofit organizations who interact with them, we feel that the city isn't caring enough. We spend a lot of money on it, but you know, that actual human connection, which is something that I do personally, that's what we want to bring into this, making sure that they know that we care. We're going to navigate them to these resources that they need. We're going to have a continuing conversation with them and change our strategy based off of what the response is. Well, Sean, I want to thank you for not only coming on the Close the Deal show, but I want to thank you for expressing to the viewers as well as anyone that is homeless that gets the opportunity to hear this show. Take advantage of these opportunities by contacting Social Impact Partners. Why? Is because these resources are made available in solving and helping as well as making a difference in ending homelessness. So make your pledge, okay, to Sean's organization, okay, which is Impact Partners. Make a major difference and pledge to this organization and go online and look them up. Because we want to end homelessness, but the way we want to do it is we want to stop giving homeless people money every time we look and see someone who's looking bad. We want to provide them a resource center because at the same token, you don't know whether or not that person is going to take that money and use it for drugs or alcohol. So you don't want to have that suspicion. But you know that if you're actually involved in making a difference in your community, you're making a change in that person's lives by giving them the actual resources 
to give them the choice to make a difference of their own life and not being homeless. Instead of giving them something that'll pacify them, give them an outlet, a direction where they can take that first step. Once again, we're making decisions by closing the right deals, helping people in homelessness. And through Impact Partners, this is their task in 2018 and further. Thank you again for coming on the show. Tune in Monday nights on Channel 29 on the Close the Deal show at 830. Have a good day.